Gary Reynolds, Chief Investment Officer at Courtiers, is here to talk about concentration and risk. Gary, MAG7, concentration, risk. Fill us in. If you look through history with investing, you'll find that most of the time when really nasty things happen is when markets focus on one thing or a few things. So you can take this all the way back to tulip mania when suddenly sort of the not so modern Europe looks at tulip bulbs and decides they are the thing to be invested in and then everybody goes for them and because markets are prices are a feature of supply and demand drives the price up. So last year AI becomes the new and interesting thing in the markets and every business that has got a foot in the AI camp, even if they haven't, if they're perceived to have, it drives the price up. So suddenly you find that seven stocks that I identified as being very, very associated with AI that form part of the S&P 500, their prices are driven up so that those seven stocks in the end become worth nearly 30% of the value of the S&P 500. And bearing in mind that American stocks account for 70% of the global value, these stocks are central to US stock market. So if you've got a position in the S&P 500 index, you've got a very, very big position in, in the MAG7. And as with any concentration risk, it's the same as putting all your eggs in one basket if the basket breaks, you're going to lose all your eggs. So if they're forming so much of the S&P 500, if they burst, that bubble burst, is that going to break the whole S&P 500? No, it won't break the whole S&P 500, but it'll have a pretty dramatic effect on it. So if, there's a, if we suddenly decide, if, if investors suddenly decide that these businesses with their, with their potentially fat profits from AI are not as attractive as they seem because they're not going to make as much money from AI. And, and then think about the basic concepts of competition and what that's meant to do in any market. Competition should reduce the price of things down to a level where the most efficient producer wins, but they don't win at big margins. So open markets and competition deliver good outcomes for consumers. AI is no different. And, and to give you a very, very good example of this, turn the clock back nearly 25 years to 2000. The darling of the stock market at the time was Cisco because its routers were going to be the basis upon which the internet would operate. At one stage, it's trading on around 300 times earnings. Within a couple of years on that tech bubble bursting, the stock price has collapsed nearly 90% and its PE ratios have dropped significantly. Now, actually, if you'd invested in Cisco at that time through to today, you got a half decent return. But if you invested it at the peak of the market, you haven't got your money back. So that's what concentration does. And that's why you should avoid concentration risk in portfolios. And this is what Analyst Sam Keane's talking about publishing an in-depth study around historical indices concentration. Yes, and, and you know, just so that uh, we're, we're clear here, Sam used the analogy with Cisco, so I've nicked it from his work, and, and to, to quote him, to make the point of the concentration risk. Now, there's a flip side to this, Leo. If you're a speculator and you've got a huge appetite for risk and you think that we've underestimated the benefits of AI, notwithstanding that generally every new trend is overestimated in its impact. You go back thousands of years, it's just the way it is. But if you think the market has underestimated the effects of AI and you've got a strong view and you're prepared to risk losing 90% of your money and perhaps the whole lot, be my guest, have a punt. Good for you if it comes off, as long as you understand that if it doesn't, then it's going to be a nasty consequence that could dramatically affect 
your, your final financial well-being. Now, bearing in mind, our clients ask us to invest for them for the long term and achieve their objectives as safely as we can, we will not get caught up with concentration risk. So anybody that's looking at this thinking, well, why not? Why not, Gary? Come on, you should be involved in these racy stocks. They're very liquid. They're very big. If you want to have a punt, put your money in. Yeah, good luck to you. But we're not going to get down in Cortis portfolios, we will not get them exposed to that level of concentration risk. And let me just also say, Leah, we do have exposure to the MAG7. We're not out of them completely because we've got, we've got exposure to S&P 500 index. But we have been moving the dial down away from the S&P 500 because of that concentration risk. And that is what our investors pay us to do, to reduce the risks. It does not pay within markets to follow the crowd, you said this month, but it's difficult sometimes. Well, it's difficult because you've got to be prepared to be unpopular. You know, it, it's, it's not it, the temptation aspect. It, it, it doesn't tempt me if, if uh, when you get everybody following the crowd, for me, that's opportunity. So it, it is a bit like the 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 classic. Hans Christian Andersen King's New Clothes story. You know, everybody's talking about this. This one little boy that says the king hasn't got any clothes on at all and screams it from the sideline. I think that's the problem with crowds. You all go with a narrative, even if it's completely untrue, because you don't want to be out of it. That's we we as human beings, we we are we're tribal. We're, we're social beings that like to be around the people that we agree with. Mm. We like to be, if you're, a, if you're a Manchester United fan, you like to be Manchester United supporters. If you support Chelsea, you're a Chelsea supporters. And the same way, you tend to want to gravitate to people that think the same way. It's absolute toxic in the investment market. So you have to stand back and say no. A couple of examples where we've done that in the past few years. We would not buy into the attractiveness of long-dated gilts when they were delivering a yield of less than 1%. And that blew up spectacularly in the autumn of, of 2022. And yet for the past few years before that, we were fighting off the criticisms that we should be longer in longer in long dated gilts. Right? We should have more of our money in long dated gilts. We wouldn't do it. Mm. So it was a lot. It might have been a bit uncomfortable arguing why we shouldn't do it. But when it turned, it the decision was hugely beneficial to client portfolios. That's why we had that stellar 2022, not in absolute terms, but relative to what the rest of the market did and picked up all those awards from, from Lipper at the start of 2023. And then, of course, along comes the Mag, Mag 7, and we won't, we won't be concentrated in it in the same way. Mm. But it's beginning to come back our way because if you look at the results so far this year, the MAG7 are not so magnificent in 2024. And that, I think, is the market just doing what the market does, which is saying, hang on a minute, this, there are better opportunities elsewhere. So some of the capital begins to move away. Sure. And in, in the article, it states the overall market is relying on performance and reacting poorly when these companies fail to meet expectations. Does that mean these MAG7s are under greater pressure to perform and that's causing them stress that will lead to a pop yeah so if 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 you're trading on if you go back to that cisco example if you're going to trade at 300 times earnings and the market norm for the s p 500 let's be generous is 20 then you've got to significantly boost your profits as an investor if you're going to buy a business at 300 times earnings you're already paying for the future increases in profits. So not only you've, you've got to get those spectacularly high increases in profits, but to get a better return than the rest of the market, you've got to get something else on top. If you watch Dragon's Den, it's when the, the business owner goes in and says, I want £100,000 for a 1% stake in my business. And then the dragons find out that the business has never made any money. And, and the, the business owner says, oh, but it's going to make money in five years time. It'll be worth 10 million. And Peter Jones says, 
Why do I give you money today based on a five-year term value? But when you buy NVIDIA, that's exactly what you're doing. If NVIDIA's directors walked into Dragon's Den, they'd get kicked out. <laughs> Gary, thank you for that insight. Is there anything else that you'd like to cover? Have you got anything in the pipeline that you're thinking about, writing about, to help clients understand what we're doing with their investments and what your sites are on with the team? Mm. Well, on a slightly different subject, um, which I will cover, there's been a lot of interest around how the UK and the globe is going to fund its, its, its decarbonisation projects and whether it, how it's going to fund it when debt to GDP is at 100%. Well, so I'm going to tell you, it's a spoiler, it's not a problem. It's about time we started to think a little differently than the way we've been told to think. And it means that there's some very, very exciting prospects ahead. So that's the next thing I'm going to cover in an article, Leo. And I'm going to touch on that more in the, uh, in the December seminars. Thanks, Gary. We'll look forward to that. And you can look forward to Sam Keane's in-depth research note on historical indices concentration. Thank you for watching.